In this tutorial, I'm going to share with you the script that I use to allow me to add JavaScript to particular pages on the WordPress site and just on those pages so it doesn't load on every page on your site. It only loads exactly where you want it to. We do this in the functions.php file. I give you the script. I show you how to use it. We're getting started right now. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you're new here and you like WordPress, and you like WordPress tips and tricks and how to make it work even better for you and your clients, then click subscribe because I publish lots of stuff to make your WordPress experience more awesome. Also click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. Now click on this card that appeared and register for the Brute Force Eliminator webinar where I show you how to protect my websites and my client websites using three simple tactics that I apply to all my websites to keep Brute Force hackers out for good. After you do that, come back to this tutorial. Let's get started. To add JavaScript to specific pages, you just need a simple script. It's on the blog. Link to it in the description. I'm gonna copy and paste the script from right here. If I can actually select it. Okay, there we go. Copy that script. We're going to put this into our functions file. I'm running a child theme on mine. I'm going to go in through the file manager. You can go in through FTP if you prefer that. Hit into file manager, public underscore HTML, WP content, themes. My child theme is right here. I have a backup for my functions file and a regular one. I'm just going to delete this backup just to show you why I have it. So I have a child theme for one, and if you don't have one, you should have one. They are very important. They allow you to make updates to your theme without them being overwritten when the parent theme is updated. But another thing I do as well is I duplicate my functions file before I work in it. So I just highlight it, click on copy, add a functions-backup, or add a dash backup at the end. So this one's gonna be our backup. If something goes wrong while we're in here, we can delete this file, rename the backup to functions.php, and our site will be back online. That's why I make these backups. I'm gonna go ahead and put that code in here. So I'm gonna highlight the functions file, click on edit, scroll down to the bottom, paste this code in here. And basically what it is, is we create a function called load.js assets. This function name can be whatever you want it to be as long as this name matches this name down here. Those two have to match, but as long as they match, you can name them whatever you want, as long as they're allowed characters. Inside this function, we have an if statement. So if we're on a page and that page has an ID, which we're gonna replace in just a second, but if the page is ID of say 10, we're gonna run this or put this into the header file. If the page is anything but 10, then this will not run. And that's how we include it on specific pages. And if we go to the WordPress codex, and let's see, WordPress conditional, conditional tags in WordPress. So in here, what we can see is, like we just saw the is page function, we have an is home. We have is front page, is front page and is home is admin, the is, is single is for a post. Here's an example of is single post ID of 17. And our page one should be on here as well. Here's the is page one we're doing. Is page 42 is gonna be the ID for that example. We'll have a different ID in ours. But these are all the different conditionals. So if you don't want to do, let's see where was I, over here. So we're just doing is page of ID we're going to find an ID in just a second. But if you want to have a different way to figure the specific pages you want the script to appear on, that's where you get it from on this conditionals page. So we're going to carry on with this example. I'm going to find a page. Let's just go to all pages, randomly pick a page. Let's do this, this one, activity. And then click on edit. And the post ID or the page ID is up in the URL and it is 198. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it in here. And now we have to fill out the rest of this thing. The my.js is just a, a handle, just a description of what this file is. You can name it whatever you want. I usually do something descriptive. 
This is the path to the file. Currently, I don't really have a, a file here, so I'm just gonna make it up. Actually, I'm just gonna make one. Let's put it that way. I'm just gonna go up back to the root of my site. I'm gonna click on file to add a new file. I'm gonna call it my js.js. Go on create file, and inside of it, I'm just gonna add something. Let's see, edit. And I'm just gonna add alert and say, I am here. Now, when this JavaScript file loads, it's gonna have alert, I am here pop up. So that's how we're gonna know where this file exists. So I'm just gonna keep that open. If I head out to this page right now, we do not get the alert. If we look at the source for this page and we search for my-js.js, we don't have the file here. So we've confirmed it's currently not on our site. I'm gonna head back into our functions file, I'm gonna add the path to that file which is, it's in the root, and it's my-js.js. And now I'm gonna save this, and hopefully nothing breaks. If it breaks, I'll show you how to fix it. So let's head back out here, refresh this page. Now we have an alert that says, I am here. So clearly the file loads. Go to the source, refresh the source, and look for my-js.js, and here it is. So we've included that file on this page. Now let's confirm it's on other pages. So let's go to any other page. Go to this one. View it. No alert has popped up. Check the source and my-js.js is nowhere to be found. So that file has been included just on that one page. So that's all there is to it. I hope you got a lot of value from this tutorial. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Also, click the card that just popped up, register for the Brute Force Eliminator webinar, where I show you three tactics that I apply to all my sites and client sites to keep Brute Force hackers out for good. And after that, Click on one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you learn even more about WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.